Okay, thank you very much for an incredible acoustic strip down performance. Yeah. We are with Jonathan and Philip. You guys announce your, introduce yourselves. Yeah, so I'm Jonathan, violinist, and I'm Philip, cellist from Archive. Yeah. Okay, now last night, it's Music Fest. If anybody knows anything about Music Fest, expect the unpredictable weather. Your show was canceled, but it was like there was like what two times where you were tuning up. They were opening up, reopening the fest. Yeah. You were tuning up, and all of a sudden it's like it came through. Oh, we're closing down because there was a there was lightning ten miles away. You yeah. know, at least two times. I yeah. Um, now, when you're in a situation like that, does that like affect like you're gearing up, you know, to get started? I mean, does that? Affect, like, how does that affect, does that affect you at all, like, your mentality or, like, the stop and go, or do you just, like, roll with it? Uh, I think at this point we're just accustomed to anything that the world throws at us, right? And I really just, I was, I, you know, obviously we were bummed. We talked about it afterwards. We love playing Main Street, and, like, that was prime slot, Main Street, Friday night, you know, that could have been sick. But, you know, you can't control the weather. Yeah. And we, I think... We've played so many shows in the past where we have gotten affected by the weather. At this point, it's just like, you know what? You fight the battles that you can fight, right? And, and you, yeah, we also, and, and I think the, the good thing about that was that we had today to look forward to. Like, if that was our only thing, I think we would have been. That awful. would have sucked. Really, would have sucked. I think we felt worse for the people that were out there, like waiting for us and who trapped. There, there are people that traveled out to see us last night. Yeah, so I, I, I saw like even even a, you had lager plots like slay, like you could barely. I, I was like, it's like all right, I need a couple close-ups. I'm like, where can I go up front? Yeah, awesome. and awesome. and speaking of your, your, the show you just performed, in 11 years of live music reviews, both here in Lena Valley, New York, and Philadelphia, that was one of the few times I saw a band get a standing ovation automatically. Now, I'm gonna go a little bit into your history. How did both of you find your love and passion for, for music and then for performing? Wow. Well, I mean, we've both been playing since we were kids. Music has been part of our lives. You know, we both started when we were young, Jonathan when he was four, myself when I was eight. And so music has been part of our lives since the very beginning. And um, I think both of us have been, were inspired by seeing other great artists share music, right? You see someone who has a gift and then who's able to share that and move you emotionally. And it's an amazing thing. And then to be able to have the opportunity through training, through communities that we're in, to get a chance to start doing that yourself, it can be an amazing thing. The first time you perform and the first time you get to see, oh, we can do that too. When I play music, I can move someone. And then let alone when we met each other and uh, the first times that we played for people and they thought that we must have been playing for years and it's like, no, we just met. But the thing that we're able to share is obviously moving people, it's taking people on a journey and that's why we do what we do. I mean, music is perhaps one of the most powerful languages in the world, the most powerful mediums in the world. The fact that both Philip and I, when we were kids, we were drawn to music. I was literally four when I started playing my instrument, right? And I demanded for my parents to play. So there's, music has that quality, and I think that's what uh, what we love about it. I think we're just, we feel so lucky to be musicians and to be able to travel all around the world and come to places like Music Fest and have instant connections with people, right? That's, that's the most powerful thing, and I think the world needs more of that. Okay. Now, one thing I've noticed, the uh, first time I called you guys was last year when Carly Moffa brought you, brought you on stage. And as soon as I saw you, I, uh, I'm like, okay, when, when's the next show? When's the next show? Um, one thing I really take notice about, because to me, when I go see a band or a musician, I want to experience it. I don't want to just sit there and watch. But when you two are on stage, it comes across that watching you, all that matters is the music and the moment. And all of a sudden, the song's over, and you look up like, "Oh shit, there's people out there." <laughs> Does that am I am I taking that the wrong way, or it's is totally that right, yeah. is that the way that I, mean, it's, I think it's all encompassing? We're living the same music that you're you're listening to. Like we go on that journey each and every time we play the piece, and it really transports us, right? And that that's I mean that's the power of music that it really can transform people. When we were playing with Carly Maffa one year ago, that was the night that we met her. That was the first time we ever played together on wow. stage. Yeah. 
it looked like it was well rehearsed with oh, the, no, the, it was like completely she, improvised. She DM'd us on Instagram a few days before we showed up. We're like, okay, let's go up there. And we didn't we like might have known one of the songs that she like she yeah. gave us like she gave us one of the songs. I forget what happened. But then we just stayed we just on stay up there. We just like okay. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's the power, right? Like it's just kinda like, wow, we had an instant connection with Carly and then you all had an instant connection. Yeah, yeah so now I want to get. I like to focus on the behind the scenes with any, you know, any indie creators because, to, when you're on stage, when people hear your music, you know, online album or whatever, but there's a lot of actual work that goes that's behind the scenes that people don't know about. Um, now, is the, you were just uh, touring around the world recently, or in, in several countries. What are some of the challenges of touring? <laughs> oh my God. If oh you can sum gosh. it up in a couple, in like... Oh. I mean, people think that touring is this glamorous thing that you do. Maybe when you're on vacation and you go to one place or to a couple places, when you're touring, you're, you might be only in a place for 18 hours. And then you have to hop on the next flight and you have to, and you have to play a show and you're jet lagged. I mean, it's really taxing on the body. And then we have to show up and do like a high intensity performance for the audience. Because that's what, the audience is what matters at the end. Like, you know? They might empathize with the fact that we travel to be there, but they're really there. They paid money to come see us, and they want to. We want to give them a good show. So touring is just tax. It's just incredibly taxing on the body. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And there, you know, it's oftentimes our days aren't just spent waiting around for the show to happen. We're also spending all morning working on the back end of what it goes, what goes on to make the show possible, but also all of the things that go on to make our business possible yeah, because yeah. it's kind of like running a small business as well and so we're answering emails we're planning for the next week we, and then it's like oh and we should get ready and make sure that tonight's show is awesome <laughs> yeah. and so we've got all those things going on and kind of like what you were talking about yesterday where sometimes things happen like weather like rain i think as professionally touring musicians we can kind of roll with whatever punches life throws our way and we have to be able to to be able to pivot, to say, okay, well, uh, we don't have enough time to sound check if we want to, or uh, we have to change locations, or uh, any number of things that could go wrong, and no matter what, you have to be able to pivot, and then, like Jonathan said, still show up so that the audience doesn't miss a beat. Okay. Now, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, long before social media even mattered, okay? You know, bands started in the garage, played at the clubs, got paid nothing, and worked their way up. But this is a totally different industry now. How important is like a social media presence and the actual numbers to indie, especially indie musicians? How important? How important is that whole? Is that whole it's side to it? It's more important than just being an amazing artist. You need to have the numbers. If you're just an amazing, num uh, amazing artist without the numbers, no legitimate record label or company or agent will look at you, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we live in an age where, um, you know, risks are few and for, like, like for the professionals that are essentially controlling um, the ecosystem are really hesitant to take risks on, on artists. And so you really need to, the social media is everything. Um, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> it's a completely different landscape. And it makes it harder in many ways, I think. Um, to get discovered, but also like you have accessibility at your fingertips too, so your life can change instantly. Okay. Um, now, in general, and you know, if you could sum it up in, in briefly, overall, what are I mean, we live in we've been in the age of the indie creators, indie artists, indie musicians for what like at least over one close to two decades now, probably. What are some of the main challenges that you face as? You know, that as indie musicians, like some, you know, that you haven't already mentioned, like some of the main difficulties and challenges for, okay, hey, here we are, there's three million others out there. Mm -hmm. Well, like Jonathan was saying in regards to social media, there is so much technology and opportunities available and made accessible to anybody, right? Anyone can pull up a TikTok account and potentially reach millions of people. But by the very same token, that means that what is now expected and required of indie artists is oh, that requirement is only going up. Now, 
uh, you, you can't just be, like Jonathan was saying, a good artist. You have to be a social media content creator. You have to be able to design an attractive website. You have to be able to do your own marketing. You have to be able to wear so many different hats because those tools are now available to us. And so the, the competition, uh, it, it, what is required is just going up. And so you have to be able to pivot in so many different directions in order to build enough momentum to then start being able to uh, send that off to other people. So I think that the challenge is, um, I mean, we don't live in any other time, so it's hard to like compare apples yeah. to oranges, but it seems like, uh, yeah, that there, there are more and more hurdles. Yeah, and I think the, the entertainment landscape is more saturated than ever, and so you really have to find ways to stand out. And so whether, I think that goes back to your art, like your art really has to be different. And then you have to be savvy at all the other things that Philip was talking about. And you have to be able to create your own opportunities and be your own managers, be your own agents, and be really good with people. So essentially, it's at least five full-time jobs in addition to oh, yeah. performance. Absolutely. Uh, and you, obviously, you can build your team out, but in order to build your team out, you need to have the revenue source in order to hire people. And it's just like, it really is the chicken and the egg thing of like, well, yeah, what, what, which comes first? Which comes first? Like, what? What investments am I making at this moment in our career? What do we need? You know, all, yeah. So I have two final questions. I, I'll let you guys enjoy music for a few hours before what I know will be an incredible, and phenomenal show. Do you ever get burned out, or do you ever experience creative block? And how do you deal with? And if you do, how do you deal with both? Yes. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, it's hard. It is hard. Burnout is real. Um, how do we deal with it? I, you know, I, for me, when I'm on stage performing for an audience, that's that's when I'm dealing with it. That's when I, that's when it makes when everything is worthwhile. You know, when we have an incredible connection with the audience, like we do at Music Fest, it's it really that's the most joyous feeling. Um, out there and it makes everything worthwhile um, obviously we can do things like plan try to plan vacations here and there time off or like art, honestly we're like planning artist retreats right now where we can focus on writing because we are so busy performing now and traveling that we really don't have any time to, to write and so that's something that I think both Philip and I are being a lot more conscious about is like we need to actually like set dedicated composition songwriting time and then block out everything and say no to other things um, writer's block yeah <laughs> here and there you know but it, I think it really helps for Philip and I that we have each other I think it's one thing if you have writer's block but you're the only person writing the song and you're like you feel like you're in this like vortex of <laughs> a blockage yeah, yeah. <laughs> like for Philip and I like we really follow each other's lead, and so like if one of us is having a tough time, you know, we have the other person to bounce ideas off of, and it really makes things easier. Um, and obviously, like if both of us are stuck, we just turn to artists that we love, and we think about, okay, what what about that song? What what about that artist really inspires us? You know. Um, but actually, I don't think like as a as a group, as a duo, we. We've had tough days, but actually, for the most part, we're incredibly like we're really efficient when we write. <laughs> it's like, dang, okay, that's pretty good. It's actually, let's, like, let's uh, you know, let's one more day. Let's, yeah, this, I, is, I this totally, sounds good. Let's go I with totally it. I totally right? attribute that to the fact that we have one another and that we're really we were great to me. You know, um, if I was by myself, absolutely, writer's block would be happening all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And final question: I always try to end uh, an in interview with this. Advice to other indie musicians and indie creators in general, because, you know, artists, because there's there's certain things that are common across the entire spectrum. So, what advice would you give to other indie creators and our musicians out there? Something that I think is immensely helpful is finding your community, and that's community both creatively, right? People who are like-minded, um, not necessarily who are doing the exact same thing as you, right? The people who we have an art creative community might be doing um, other kinds of art forms or might be doing other kinds of music genre of wise, but people who are of the same mindset and mentality, people who, when you're in a rut, can speak encouragement and inspiration into what you're doing, who can remind you of the value of what you're doing. So there's that artistic community, but then also the family, the friends, the people who are around you to kind of lift you up. Because being an independent creator, being an entrepreneur is not easy. It's 
it's kind of like you know uh, if normal normal uh, career paths are driving on a well-paved highway in the daytime sometimes being an independent can feel like you're off-roading at night in a, a jalopy with no headlights and you're gonna even the best driver you're gonna hit a pothole or two and so you need the people around you to be like hey you know keep going and uh, just that encouragement and that support I think is so valuable um, my, my advice would be to, to stay curious, you know, and like to always be trying to get better in different fields. And I think there's this, I don't know, preconception out there of being an artist that you have to be amazing at the one thing. And it's just kind of like, yeah, you do have to be, like, you have to be good enough, I think, as an artist so that people have a connection with you and people remember you after you play. But at the same time, you have to be really good at so many other things. And I think when you're good at multiple things and you find unique ways of combining all those things together together to become your unique self, that's when the magic happens and that's when everything kind of like ricochets and you, you really stand out. And so I think especially in this day and age, you have to be good at so many things. You have to be so versatile um, and that's just more important than ever. And so like, stay curious, you know, like follow your heart. Um, and, and always, yeah, always try to expand the realm of possibility. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you both very much for your time, especially after yeah. performing. <laughs> and, you know, and th thank you so much for your time. Right. And I cannot wait for that show, Plaza Tropical. And what I really can't wait for is to see you on the large stage at the Stocks in September. That's going to be Levitt Pavilion, absolutely. That's going to be so fun. September 6th, we can't wait. Yep, yeah. thank you.